Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, kids of all ages, welcome back to FTB Unstable. That's right, folks, we are back in our modded Minecraft world, and we are getting ready to do some unstable stuff. That's right, unstable. Um, so last episode, we uh, we worked with the refined storage uh, automation type stuff, and I struggled with that big time. I struggled with it big time, but several of you came to my rescue. Several of you came to my rescue, including... Uh, let's see here. Who all was that? Let's see. There was there was Chris Hoekstra. He came to my rescue with a video. Um, there was also Lee LR Gaming. He came to my rescue with a video as well. And Digital Seraphim came to the rescue with an Imgur post. Uh, so we've got some still photos. We've got some video tutorial type stuff. And I'm going to tell you what. Those guys got it done. They got it done. Um, so I'm going to make sure I put links in the description for Chris's video, Chris Hoekstra's video, and uh, Digital Seraphim's uh, imager post. Um, the, now, Lee LR Gaming, he shared his video with me privately, so I'm not going to put his link in the description unless he tells me that it's okay. So look forward to that in the, in the future. He may, uh, he may go ahead and say, yeah, go ahead and, and link it out there and let people see it. And So we'll, uh, we'll see how that goes, but I will definitely put... Uh, put Chris's video and Digital Seraphim stills uh, in the description so you guys can take a look at them. But let me show you what I did. Let me show you what I did to change this whole setup. So this is what we had, right? This is what we left off with, okay? We had all of this, we had these over here, and that was about as far as we got, right? Well, <laughs> come over here. Uh, there's nothing here, right? We didn't do anything. Yes, we did. We put a hole in the floor right down here. Boom. Look at that. So this is what we came up with. This is what I came up with based on their suggestions. Uh, and I'm actually going to add one more over here. Uh, so there'll be four solderers down here. And the way I see it, there are there are four different, essentially, methods or, or, or processes that you really need to, um, to automate in this mod pack when it comes to uh, the, the, the refined storage stuff. So I'm calling this one here solderer number one. Solderer number one comes off of chest number one. Chest number one comes off of, uh, off of uh, crafter number one. And in crafter number one, we've got all of our patterns for our printed basic circuits, our printed basic process. We've got the basic, we've got the improved, we've got the advanced, and we also have the printed silicon. So those all come over here. So what happens is, is the crafter will export to the chest. Then we use Ender IO conduits to pull the items out of the chest, and it will only insert these items. Okay, so if it gets... Uh, if it gets iron or gold or diamonds or silicon, then it will input into the center, this one right here, into the center of this one. And then down here underneath, you can kind of see it right there, we've got an importer set up to, uh, to take those items out of there once they get crafted and, and take them back into the system. This one over here I'm affectionately calling number two. Okay, number two works the same way as number one except for it's doing all of our printed processors. So this is the basic processor, the improved, and the advanced. So this is the iron, this is the gold, and this is the diamond. Okay, same setup. It gets the it gets the request. It exports the items to the uh, to the chest, and then from there it gets put into here. Now the filtering system is a little bit more complex over here because we have to worry that we have to make sure that things go to certain places. So over here, this one here, this is the top. So in the top, I want it to put the printed um, the printed processors. So it's going to put the iron, the gold, and the, and the diamond processors in the top. In the middle, redstone, okay? And then in the bottom, it's going to put the printed silicone. And again, importer in the bottom. So once it actually has an item in the output, the importer will suck it out and take it back to the storage system. Now this one over here, I don't have anything set up in yet. What this one's going to be is this one's going to be all of the upgrades, um, this one's going to be all the upgrades, so the speed upgrades, the range upgrades, the all of those upgrades that you can build in uh, in refined storage will go in this one. And then the fourth one I'm going to use for all of the machines. So any machine that you have to use a solderer to make, like a uh, like a disk drive, or a uh, or a grid, or a crafting grid, or or not a grid, but a crafting grid or a pattern grid, you have to use the uh, the solderer to make those. So those will have patterns in this fourth one that I'm going to put in. I just didn't have enough, really didn't have enough resources to worry about making it just yet. But uh, we're going to have 
a bunch more disk drives. Okay, I, I envision us having an entire wall or several walls uh, of these disk drives. Maybe even have like a, a server rack kind of setup where we've got aisles going down and there's just you know, just tons of these disk drives everywhere. So that's, but that's the setup that we came up with for that. And so thank you to you three guys for all of your suggestions. They helped out very, very much. Um, I also did some changes over here. Um, I, I changed out the, the RF tool setup that I had uh, for the tree farm and put in a farming station. That way we got, uh, we've got more wood go coming in uh, more regularly. And, and then I changed this setup back over here. So I, I took all, I had a bunch of these Sterling generators already. I just made them easier to see. Uh, so the wood comes in through the farming station, comes over here to the, uh, to the, uh, the alloy smelter and turns it into charcoal. From there, it gets piped over here through uh, item filters into, uh, into the resonators to make the, uh, the red coal. And then from there, the red coal gets put into each one of these Sterling generators through round robin uh, item, pi item pipes. So they all have, you know, roughly the same, uh, well, I guess that one doesn't. Uh, but they all have roughly the same amount of uh, red coal in them so that we get basically the same amount of output from all of them. Um, and I just spit all over my microphone. <laughs> oh my gosh, I just got done eating dinner and so my my lips are a little bit a little bit moist from uh, from all the delicious goodness that we had for dinner at the RB household tonight. It was left overnight, but still, it's still pretty good. Um, so that's the changes. That's the stuff that we came up with the solderer and that's the stuff that we changed for the... Uh, uh, for the tree farm, um, we're still working on getting. Whoa, hey, don't break the blocks. Uh, still working on getting more uh, more crystals over there in the uh, the big energy producing area, uh, the deep resonance producing area. Um, I'd made some progress. I made some changes down here. Uh, well, not really changes, but I made the hallway a little bit longer. So the next the next spawner that we're going to do will go in there. I think we're going to put a killer Joe down here in the down here in the back corner. Um, I, I, I can't, well, I guess I can, I, I let it, I let it run for a little while. And so we've got a fair number of blaze rods. I mean, we're not going to be using a ton of them. Let's, let's see how many we have. Um, boom, blaze rods, 136. So I let it run for, I don't know, an hour or so after we got done uh, recording the video on Sunday. Um, and so that takes care of that. But there is something that I, that I hate about this refined storage system. And that is that I always have to come back to this grid or I always have to come back to this crafting grid or this pattern grid to access my items. What if I'm over there at the villager farm? What if I'm over there at the Batania base? What if I'm over there at the, uh, at the power generation station? What if I create something new someplace else? I'm gonna need, a, uh, I'm gonna need some, some more stuff. I'm gonna need to wa a way to, whoops, I just pushed the wrong button on something. Um, I've got a list over here on my tablet of things I wanted to talk to you guys about today, and I'm kind of going through and checking things off as we talk about them. But uh, but there is another thing that we're going to need, and that is some wireless communication. So today, what we're going to do is we're going to get into the wireless features of the uh, of the refined storage system. So uh, to do that, let's let's pull up refined storage. So at uh, refined refined storage. So let's see, in here we've got, there's a couple of things that we need. We need a wireless transmitter. That's this thing right here. And we also need the uh, wireless grid. So let's see what it takes to build one of these doohickeys. It's gonna take an advanced processor, it's gonna take a machine casing, and it's going to take an ender pearl. I think we have most of those things. Uh, we're gonna need a machine casing, so that's easy enough. Uh, hello? Uh, boom and boom. Oh, I don't have any more, but that's okay because I've got a pattern for it. So we can go ahead and craft up. Let's go ahead and craft a stack, I guess. Go ahead and start that, and so it's gonna it's gonna start crafting that up for me, which is awesome. And we'll take some of these like so, and boop and boop and do that. So there's our machine casing, and then the other thing that we needed was we needed six more of those. So we got it. So there's a wireless transmitter right there. And my inventory is getting filled up again. I have got so much stuff. I killed a bat, got a bat wing. I don't know what I'm going to use that for. Uh, but anyway, we got all of that. And then we also are going to need to have the, uh, uh, the wireless grid. So what do we need to do to make one of those? That's pretty simple also. Do I have all of that? I have everything except for the advanced processor. 
So let's go ahead and tell it to go ahead and make us one because it should be able to do that. So let's see. Crafting, crafting, crafting. Uh, let's go over here and check the crafting monitor and see how it's doing. Uh, items processing. Oh, good. It's actually working. That's awesome. So now we just need to kind of hang out over here and wait for it to finish. And it should be, there it is right there. Perfect. So now we got one of those. And now we've got ourselves a wireless tablet. Uh, it looks like it takes RF. Well, it's actually RS, but how do we how do we charge this thing? Is there a charger for this? Is there a way to charge this? There's a machine casing, there's an interface, solderer, detector, destructor. We've got storage blocks, controllers, creative controllers. Uh-huh. Do I just do I just hook it up to a can I just put it into like an RF tools? Can I just put it in here? I don't really know. Let's see. <gasps> it's charged. Sweetness. So now we can do this, we can do this, we can do this, and it doesn't work. Why doesn't it work? Because we forgot to put the <laughs> we forgot to hook up the wireless. So I think all we have to do is take this wireless transmitter, this thing right here. And I think all we have to do is put it onto a cable. <gasps> I think it works. So, boom. No, that's not what we do. So, what do we do? Uh-huh. Uh-huh. I don't think I I don't think I've thought this through very well. What do I have to do to make this work? Shift right click? Nope. Nope. Uh-huh. Okay, so I guess hang tight for just a minute. And I'm going to see if I can't figure out how this thing works and uh, and we'll carry on with something else. So hang tight for just a momo. Okay, I figured it out. When all else fails, go read the wiki. Uh, so apparently this crafter or this grid, this portable, or this wireless grid, let's call it a wireless grid, let's call it what its name is, has to be bound to a controller. It has to know what, uh, it has to know what wireless transmitter device it's actually trying to talk back to, okay? So what we have here then is we need to actually, we need to shift right click on this and now we can use it. So here we are, we're in our wireless grid, we can go through every item we have in our inventoire, which I love to pieces. Now we can't craft with this thing, which is kind of, which is kind of, you know, kind of a bummer, but that's okay. We'll, you know, we'll make it work. It'll be okay. Um, this will be great for uh, getting into items, you know, while we're out and about. Now, the problem with that though is, you know, right now, here I am, I'm doing well, you know, I can access the grid and all that. But if I come over here, let's say this, I walk over here, no transmitter in range, okay? What that is is there we have one wireless trans, uh, transmitter right now in our world, and it's right here. And it has a 16 block radius, okay? So what we need to do is we need to increase the range of this. Uh, now we can increase the range of this by doing a couple of things. We can either make a range upgrade for this one, and as you use the range upgrade, you actually get, um, Let's see, what is it? Uh, the range upgrade is, the range upgrade is, where is the range upgrade? Uh, wireless transmitter and then range upgrade. So the range upgrade, uh, okay, I, I was looking in the wrong spot. Um, Okay, so you get 16 blocks, and as you add a, as you add these range upgrades, I think it adds like eight blocks to uh, to what you to what you can pick up. So like right here, I'm good, but if I come back, you know, even even as far as say like right here, that's where I lose the signal, which is about 16 blocks, right? So I think what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and see about crafting a couple of these uh, of these range upgrades. So we need a range upgrade, which is this right here. So that's going to be an upgrade plus two ender pearls. So to make the upgrade, that would be this. I think we've got all of that. So let's go ahead and try it. I do. So let's go ahead and make a range upgrade. Uh, I think, yeah, let's go ahead and make one for now. And then we need to take that range upgrade and two ender pearls and put them into a solderer. Now I left one solderer up here in the main part of the base just so I've got something that I can use, right? You know, if I just wanna do some, you know, like one-off crafting, you know? And so, oh good, it's working, sweet. 
So what we'll do is we'll, we'll take this range upgrade and we'll put it on there and we'll see how much of an increase that it gives us. It says 16 blocks uh, is what the base is. And then uh, it does, but it doesn't tell me what the, what the range upgrades actually add to it. Um, it, does, it says the range upgrade increased the range of the wireless transmitter by using this upgrade, the amount of uh, RS per tick that the machine draws will increase. But it doesn't, so it doesn't tell you exactly how many blocks it increases it by. But we're going to figure that out right now. So we're going to go ahead and, is that harvestable? Mm, no, it says we need a pickaxe. Holy cow, we need a pickaxe for a, for a wireless transmitter? Good grief. That's not a pickaxe. There we go. So now we should be able to just put that into our crafting inventory or our crafting area, right? And do that and do that. Nope. Apparently we got to use an actual. Um, apparently we got to use an actual crafting grid. Whoops. That's I can't do that on that one. That one's not the one. I need this one. Quit it. So I do that and then that. No. I think there was a way. Oh, that's just, yeah, that's a range upgrade. So how do you apply the range upgrade? I, I know I saw this somewhere. Do I put it in here? Do I put it in here? I don't know that I do. Hang on a second here. Wireless transmitter. There's that. It doesn't tell us anything about that. Huh, that's interesting. Um, I think what I'm going to do think what I'm going to do is I think I'm going to go ahead and uh, and cut here and go and look at a couple other pages real quick just to make sure that we're putting this you know that we're doing this right because um, the range upgrade should be should be applied to the wireless transmitter I don't think it gets applied to anything else uh, because I, I don't know of anything else that it can be applied to well wait a minute oh hey wait okay wait hold on if I do this if I place this can I get into it? I can. Aha! So it's got a range of 16 blocks. So now if I put the upgrade in, 24 blocks. Okay, so it did add 8 blocks. And I'm guessing that as I add transmitters, it'll add 8 more blocks. So if I add 8 more, that'll be 32. And then 8 more would be 40. And then 8 more after that would be 48. And I think that's the maximum. I think that is the maximum number of blocks that you can get. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go ahead and cut away and I'm going to build a bunch of these uh, wireless transmitters and, and actually I'm going to build some more upgrades and I might even do the, uh, the work down here to automate uh, the building of those upgrades because you know that's going to be that's going to be quite beneficial to us. So I'm going to go ahead and cut away here. When I come back, we should have a fair number of these wireless uh, transmitters around so that we can access our inventory from anywhere. So hang tight, and I'll be right back with you. Here we are. We're putting the finishing touches on a couple of uh, a couple of extensions to our little uh, wireless network. Now I am out of <laughs> I am sadly out of diamonds, but uh, but this is what I've done so far. So I added a wireless transmitter over here near the villager farm. I will not be able to do much inside of the villager farm. I mean I can get to some of this, but I'm going to run out of. Oh, I guess. Well, I guess it's I guess that's pretty good, really. Uh, but I can do this. Look at this. So we can boom, 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 and then and then we can do this. Boom, boom, boom. Put those in there. So that's pretty awesome. Um, I I'm gonna see if I can figure out a way to decorate this up a little bit. Maybe I don't know. Maybe put it on like a pole out here or something. I don't know. We'll <laughs> we'll have to see what we can figure out for that. Um, but I just you know I kind of tunneled over here and and laid some laid some cable underground and. Uh, that is one thing I wish you didn't have to do and if you guys know of some way to do this so that it We don't have to lay all this cable. I would be interested to know that um, But I ran cable all the way around, you know, and and then I did the same thing over this way I went uh, out underneath and out this way 
laid cable along the outside here and over here and then I tunneled over this way and I got to this spot right here which this spot right here I don't think I'll have to hide very much this spot right here is actually pretty good put a bunch of range upgrades in there and so now we can actually get all the way over to this stone block right here at the Batania base and have no issues but if we go one farther we're out of range but that's okay uh, that is okie dokie now so that takes care of all of the wireless. Um, there is going to be more. Trust me, there will be more. I'd like to get some wireless over there to the GP farm for extra utilities, although we don't have to go over there very often because we are generating a ton of, uh, of grid power, 222 grid power, and we're only using a fraction of that between the chunk loaders and, and my angel ring and all that good stuff. We're not using very much of it at all. But uh, this is something that I that I am not real sure what has occurred, okay? Take a look at this. You guys, if you can figure this out for me or help me figure this out, that would be uh, awesome sauce. Okay, so this is my pure white daisy, right? Uh, remember a few episodes ago, I had broken textures and uh, somebody commented, yeah, I had broken textures too. All I had to do was break them and then uh, put them back and everything was fine. Well, not fine. Not fine at all. It says that that's a mana detector and I don't really think that this is a mana detector. Um, so, and it requires a pickaxe to break, but when I get it back, I get my pure white daisy. So I'm not sure what happened there, and it happened to all of my flowers. So, of course, I'm not generating any mana any place. I, I do have a few pools left over with some in them, but, uh, but yeah, I'm not generating anything, and that's, um, that's disturbing. I don't know if there, if I need to just recraft all the, uh, all of the flowers, or if I need to, if there's something broken in a, in the, in the mod file itself. I know that there's, uh, I'm currently running 4.2.5, of unstable. I know there's a 4.2.6 out there. I don't know if that's something that uh, that will fix this, but um, yeah, I don't know. It's kind of it's kind of a bummer, really, that uh, that this is happening. So I, I'd like to have you guys' feedback on this because I do want to tidy up this Batania base and actually get it going on some stuff too. Because there are some uh, there are some bobbles that I'd like to have. There are some flowers that I'd like to have. But uh, yeah, if you guys can if you guys can help me out with this, that'd be amazing. Uh, Hang tight. I'm going to sleep, and uh, we'll probably do something else when I come back. Because we've got a little bit of time left, so hang tight. Okay, I was looking around for something that we could round out the episode with, and I think I found it. So I've been throwing stuff into, you know, as I come back from doing little mining sessions or, you know, just out in the world, and I pick something up that I want to have smelted. You know, I'll throw it in this chest, and of course then it comes over here to all the different sag mills and all of the different smelters, and it does its thing, right? Well, whoops. Uh, and it does its thing. Well, it does, but... I noticed I had to make some glass and I noticed that as I made the glass it never made it back to my system and I was like uh oh why did it not make it back to my system and then I remembered that I did all of this down here you know I did some reconfiguring down here and I remembered that this dimensional transceiver was set up to get all of the items that were feeding back into that into this chest back here um, and uh, <laughs> and sending them into the refined storage system. So we need to uh, we need to fix this. So what? Oh, that's the wrong block. So we'll go here. So what we need to do is I need to actually get a uh, get an importer here because I got I got things <laughs> I've got things in here that need to get back over here, and uh, it should be a pretty easy fix because there are uh, there are cables right here, uh, like I mean literally right here. Uh, so if I actually come here like this, I can do this like so, and then we'll just we'll just carry this across. So, um, but I wanted to, uh, yeah, we can do this. This is all right. This will be this will be just finer than frog hair. Uh, yep. Okay. So we'll put our import here. Oh, we need a wrench. Yeti wrench to the rescue. Boom. Ha ha. Gotcha. Okay, um, but I wanted to talk to you guys about uh, about next phases. Okay, there is a lot of life left in this mod pack. Okay, trust me, I am well aware that there is a lot of life left in this mod pack, and I am in no hurry to uh, to finish this thing up. But I wanted to talk to you guys about uh, about vanilla Minecraft specifically. Um, as many of you know, uh, those of you that have been following me for uh, for all of my YouTube career, I have a couple of different uh, single player 
uh, Minecraft uh, series. I also have a server series for Beach Block that I do. Um, but, you know, the server kind of fell off, and a lot of people aren't haven't been playing on the server lately, and so that's, you know, that is what it is. But I do have the single-player series, and I just rebooted that earlier this year. Uh, but it really wasn't getting any views, and then I, you know, then I started sharing my videos in some other places, and uh, and that's where most of you guys that are watching this Unstable series came from, is from those other places. And what I was wondering is, would you be interested in watching a uh, a single player series, a single player vanilla series, and and all of the things that I've got planned for that? Um, so I would like you to down in the comments, boom, 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 right down there. I'd like you to leave. Um, leave your comments and let me know what you think about uh, bringing that single player series back. If you want to, you can go into the playlists and you can look for This is Minecraft. Um, and that is my single player series. You can t kind of take a look at the last few episodes and see some of the stuff that I've done and, uh, and see if that interests you as far as uh, something that you would watch on my channel. Because, you know, like I said, there's a lot of life left in this pack. I got a lot of things left to do. Uh, but, uh, you know, when you do one thing over and over and over again, sometimes it gets a little tedious and the people don't, you know, the people kind of lose interest. And I, I don't want that to happen. Uh, you guys are not definitely not showing any interest in or any signs of losing interest in this, which is great. I mean, I love that for sure. Hey, get up here. Um, I love that for sure. But I want to I want to make sure that you guys are getting the most bang for your buck, especially those of you that are patrons. Uh, I am I am in the process of getting out my. Uh, my brand new uh, Patreon patron uh, postcard sent out uh, for the uh, for the folks that are uh, that are supporting me over on Patreon. And if you're not aware that I have a Patreon page, I do, and it's something that you can definitely help out with by uh, by making a donation there. It could be as little as a dollar. It could be as much as ten. It could be as well. It could really be as much as you want. But uh, um, there are different benefit levels, and and some of the things that you get are like a shout out on the channel. You get a signed. Uh, postcard from me and also we're going to uh, we're going to be starting a server uh, for for play I haven't decided if it's going to be a modded server yet or if it's going to be a vanilla server but uh, definitely a server for uh, for some of us to kind of hang out and play together and you can af you can have access to that server by uh, by becoming a patreon a patron on patreon I, I get that kind of tongue-tied when I when I talk about that because I never know if I'm supposed to say a patreon or a patron on Patreon. I don't know if there. I don't know what the etiquette is on that. If you guys know, help me out. But anyway, sadly, folks, we are out of time. So I hope you enjoyed. If you did, make sure you hit that like button, and also don't forget to subscribe. The likes and the subscriptions help me out oh so immensely when it comes to those YouTube search results. Also, don't forget to check out the links down in the description for the folks that helped me out, uh, Chris Hoekstra, and uh, oh my gosh, I'm gonna mess this guy's name up again. I can see it. I can see it. I can see it. Digital Seraphim. Um, so check out those images and those videos. Also, uh, big thanks again to Lee LR Gaming uh, for your video on how to set up those uh, that solder in uh, automation. I did go ahead and put the other solderer in. Uh, I did have a few issues, and Lee, Lee, I'm telling you, your suggestions about the speed slowness upgrades or slowdown upgrades or whatever they are helped out a lot because it kept wanting to put both ender pearls for the speed upgrades in the same side of the solderer and so that helped out a lot uh, if uh, next time we come together i'll show you guys what i'm talking about if you are so inclined to see it but anyway thanks again folks i hope you enjoyed and until next time we will catch you on the flip side we'll see you later bye bye